You're listening to the Study Legal English podcast, helping lawyers and law students become fluent in legal English. For more information, visit studylegalenglish.com. Hello and welcome to the Study Legal English podcast. I'm your host Louise and today I'm going to give you an overview of banking and finance law and what it means to be a banking and finance lawyer. So today we will be looking at what this area of law involves, what lawyers working in this area do and the skills you need to be this type of lawyer. We'll also look at the pros and cons of working in this area. Before we get started, I have a question for you listeners. Do you work or do you want to work in banking and finance law? Let me know. Send me an email to louise at studylegalenglish.com or join me on social media. Just search for Study Legal English or at Legal Englisher. Podcast Pro members get access to the transcript and a vocabulary list for this episode. And of course, Light members, you also get access to the transcript for this episode. So head over to studylegalenglish.com to access your resources. If you're not a member yet and you really want to improve your legal English vocabulary, I recommend becoming a light member. You're going to get access to the transcripts of all of the podcast episodes, which is going to help you get a deeper understanding of what I'm talking about and to see the words that I'm using in context. You can download the transcripts, you can print them, you can put them on your phone, you can read them whilst you're listening to the podcast. And also over on my website, the podcast player on my website automatically plays the words as I am speaking. So you can actually follow along, which is really helpful. It's like when you watch Netflix and you put subtitles on. That's kind of the idea that we're getting there. It's really helpful for your learning. So enough of that. Let's go. Cash is king. Money is power. With it, you can rule the world. Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, money doesn't make you happy. I now have 50 million dollars, but I was just as happy when I had 48 million dollars. I think we can gather from that quote that whilst money doesn't necessarily make you happy, it certainly helps. So money, this is what this podcast is about, or rather the banking and finance law and lawyers. Banking and finance law is the giant of giants. It's the Goliath of legal fields dealing with far more than you can possibly imagine and crossing the entire globe. This type of lawyer can be very powerful. So what exactly is banking and finance law? At its core, at its centre, Banking and finance law deals with the lending and borrowing of money and the management of financial institutions and financial liabilities. By lending, I mean when you give away something, but you want it back. And probably with interest charged on it. I mean, you probably want more back than you gave away. By borrowing, I mean when you get something from someone and later you're going to have to give it back. Again, probably you're going to have to give back more than what you originally borrowed. For example, a bank lends money to a client and the client borrows money from the bank. This money borrowed is called a loan. The client takes out a loan and when the client must repay the loan, probably in instalments, there will be interest which is added on. If the client defaults on the loan, which means doesn't pay back the loan, then interest will accrue on the loan, which means that interest is going to add up and collect and the amount of debt is going to get bigger and bigger. So, banking and finance law covers a wide range of deals from taking out a small personal loan for house renovations or for a mortgage on a family home. Or maybe if you're like me in the United Kingdom, 
we often take out loans to pay for our university. On the other hand, there are huge deals, for example, securing finance for complex multi-billion dollar business transactions which span multiple jurisdictions and involve multiple stakeholders. Finance is needed for all types of projects, for purchasing real estate, acquiring companies, financing large-scale construction projects and purchasing assets. Finance is what allows a lot of companies around the world to do what they do. So what does a banking and finance lawyer do? The type of work which this kind of lawyer does really depends on the type of firm he or she works for, the type of client he or she represents, and the type of finance required by his or her clients. For example, an international law firm may act for lenders such as multinational investment banks on highly complex cross-border finance deals to fund acquisitions. Whereas a regional firm, a more local law firm, may act for borrowers wishing to secure domestic finance for a startup. Regardless of whether the banking and finance lawyer is acting for the borrower or the lender, the majority of work is non contentious. By that I mean it is transactional in nature. We're talking not going to court. Typical tasks of a banking and finance lawyer involve negotiating agreements between lenders and borrowers, paying attention to key terms such as repayment, default, remedies and interest rates. Also drafting the loan agreements, making sure that all of the terms agreed upon in the negotiations are clearly reflected in the contract. As well as this, a banking and finance lawyer must carry out due diligence to inquire about and check the risks of financial transactions. And also ensuring that clients are compliant with various financial regulations and legislation. So what skills does a banking and finance lawyer need? Obviously, it goes without saying that this type of lawyer must have an excellent understanding of the law in this field. However, banking and finance lawyers often have to deal with more than simply the law. They must have good commercial awareness to understand business risks. And when dealing with international finance, he or she will need to understand the political situation in the jurisdiction related to the deal. Why is this important? Well, because an unstable government or civil unrest pose significant risk to the economy of a country. If a government is always changing the law or is at risk of falling, then of course the economy of that country will be affected and this is a significant risk to any financial deal. So banking and finance lawyers really need to have an understanding of the way the country works, not just in relation to the law, but also in relation to the politics. They also need to be good with numbers. Of course, maths plays a role in this. It's helpful for banking and finance lawyers to monitor the stability of currencies involved in a deal because even minor fluctuations, minor changes in a currency value can have a significant impact on high value deals. Lawyers therefore need to stay ahead of the game with finance news and ensure that their clients are informed and aware of short-term and long-term risks and opportunities. What are the pros and cons of working in this area? Banking and finance lawyers typically work long hours, especially when they are working on complex deals, and the work is supposed to be particularly high-pressured. On the flip side, often there is the option to travel and the work is exciting, intellectually challenging and quite financially rewarding. 
great. So that's the end of this episode. I hope you found it useful and learned something new. Don't forget, if you're a member, to head over to studylegalenglish.com to find your member benefits. And if you're not a member, but you really want to improve your comprehension as well as expand your legal English vocabulary, head over to studylegalenglish.com forward slash pricing to check out the member options there. Don't forget to answer my question. Do you work or do you want to work in the area of banking and finance law? Let me know. Send me an email to louise at studylegalenglish.com or join me on social media. Just search for study legal English or at legal Englisher. So thanks for listening and see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Study Legal English podcast. If you really want to get ahead, why not become a member and gain access to many learning resources? Visit studylegalenglish.com forward slash pricing.